pleasure. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah who came to us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom praise is forever due. We thank Almighty God Allah, the creator of all things, to the revealer of all truth, to the sender of all the great prophets. We thank that God for giving to us Moses and the Old Testament. And we thank him for giving to us Jesus and the New Testament. And we thank him for Muhammad and the Holy Quran. I would be remiss in my duty, however, if I did not thank Almighty God Allah enough for the fulfillment of prophecy, as it is written, that in the last day there would be a people lost, lost from their own, lost from their God, lost from their people, lost from their way. God promised Abraham and told him that his seed was going to go into a strange land. Is that right? Amongst some pretty strange people. And these people will afflict them for approximately 400 years. God said, as it is written, that after that time, I, even I, will go after them. God said when he found his people, those who put them in that condition, he would leave them neither root nor branch. For God would be angry at the condition of such a people, following the wicked way of the people of Adam. God said after he would find us, he would raise one from among us. Is that right? Yes, Look at the history of God and every time he's found an oppressed people, from among that oppressed people, God would find one. And he would raise one from among them. The books say he would be like unto Moses. The question is, have you and I been in bondage here in America ever? Have we ever been in bondage? If so, how long? Huh? Are we in bondage right now? Uh-huh. I'm free. Some may say. But freedom in America is an illusion. Is that right? It might look like you're free. Well, if we are in bondage, shouldn't we be looking for a leader like unto Moses? What was Moses like? You got to know what he was like. He was not very well educated. Is that right? Yet he grew up in Pharaoh's house. The books say he speaks or spoke with a stammering tongue or not in his tongue, meaning he didn't speak too clear, or maybe he didn't speak grammatically correct. Huh? He was an unlettered man. He didn't have a degree. He couldn't claim that he had been to the white man's theology school. Huh? None of them taught him. But God came down and taught Moses himself. Right? The Christians say it was at the burning bush. God ain't no bushes burning. The burning of the bush represents the fierceness of God's anger. And then the book say, God let Moses see his hind parts. Wouldn't let him see his face, but I let him look at my back, my hind parts. And they was angry with Moses, Pharaoh, and his magicians of Pharaoh and the preachers who grew up under Pharaoh, they was angry with Moses because Moses claimed he hadn't met God. Right? And that God, God taught me. Right? 
And then God told Moses, go to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh, I said, integrate my people. Ain't that what he said? Oh, that's, what did he say? Oh, he said, let my people go. Why didn't God want it, the children of Israel integrated with Pharaoh? Thought God loved everybody. Well, I don't know about you. I'm looking for a leader for me in America like unto Moses. We have had that leader, and that man is that Georgia-born black man. Grew up here in America in the modern-day Pharaoh's house, having not lettered, but is learned. Huh? His wisdom that was given to him at the coming of Master Farad Muhammad, God in person, took the mind of Elijah and poured his knowledge into the honorable Elijah Muhammad's mind. Huh? Made himself again in Elijah. And then he left. So we thank God for coming and raising from amongst us that Georgia-born black man, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Oh, we have to thank him, brothers and sisters. And in his absence, like Moses, Moses had a companion, a freedom fighter, one skilled in the language, called Aaron. I mean, Aaron could well, because Aaron could speak. He could speak very well, and, and Aaron and Moses had to go after the religious leaders under Pharaoh, and they was casting rods, and Moses and Aaron rod just took all of them weak religious leaders, and after Moses and Aaron finished with them, they said, my God, my God, I, I, Pharaoh, look here, we can't handle Moses and Aaron. And the Aaron of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is his best student. And that man is the boldest of all black men that I know on earth today. You may say your leader is bold, but who know him? Huh? I'm talking about that man who, like Jesus, made a call to a people like unto Lazarus, saying, Lazarus, Come forth. Loose him on Monday, white man, and let him come to Washington, D.C. We're talking about none other than the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. I thank the Lord for that man. So, in their holy and righteous names, I greet you all in the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. How's everyone feeling today? All praises due to Allah. I'm feeling fine myself. Brothers and sisters, those who will be listening to this lecture via television, welcome to the Truth Hour, where we will be holding truth at falsehood until we bash out falsehood's brain. I want to thank all of those who came before me, uh, all the student ministers, as I myself, I am a student minister of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, of whom... I represent. I want to thank Student Minister Vernon Muhammad, and I want to rep, uh, Sister Minister, did you speak? Sister Minister Aisha Muhammad, and to our dear Student Minister, Brother Minister Charles. Let's give them all a warm round of applause. Uh, brothers and sisters, this is week nine. And I answer to Reverend Price, our dear brother, and we thank Allah for him. He has embarked on an impossible mission. He says God gave it to him, but I don't believe it. I believe white folks told him to attack us. Maybe that is his God. Because he was angry at white folks for a minute. 
think he got a visit. And gave him an offer he can't refuse. You love seeing yourself on TV, don't you? You better get up off us, cuz. We thank our dear brother, Reverend Price, for he showed the world the book, Message to the Black Man in America. Brothers and sisters, we need a message today that will free us from the sting of white supremacy. Huh? All of us have been affected by white supremacy. In fact, white supremacy, dear brother Reverend Price, it is so potent and it goes so deep in our subconscious mind that all of us in America in some way protect white supremacy and don't even realize we're doing it. Our educators are trained to protect white supremacy here in America. Yes, they are. Your children, when they go to elementary school, preschool, high school, college, we are trained not to do nothing for self, but to protect white supremacy. Politicians, without even knowing it, we voted them in. But they help to uphold wicked policies of America under white supremacy. The police department. See, white supremacy started with Adam, so all in Adam died. Is that right? The mindset of Adam. The police department is a department of policies that is geared toward upholding and defending white supremacy. Reverend Price, you started on white folks in your race and relation. And you want us to believe that in 1999, finally, you figured out that racism was in Christianity. Where you been, man? Where were you in the 60s? Where were you in the 50s? Where were you in the 70s, man? Were you getting high? I can't believe you waited to 1999 and you now are claiming that racism is running rampant in Christianity. You're right. And it is so deep and it's so far-fetched that even the very religion that white man gave us, Jesus knew nothing of it, called Christianity. Y'all all right? Oh, look here. You started this, sir. You cast your rod and we must cast ours. And we have to defend our faith. Not just to Christians. We got to even defend our, what we believe to some of our Muslim brothers and sisters. And you are next. Well, We thought that we would stretch the series. I wanted to finish at nine, but we're going to go on a little bit further with this thing. But to the believers, in some instances, we should be ashamed of ourselves. We have a leader that is divine. He is divine because he's backed by two. Master Farad Muhammad and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Everything that I read and say is because of him. I have no knowledge of my own at best I try to recite what I hear him teach in the best of spirits. So for nine weeks, we have been going after one of our detractors. This place should be packed from front to back. What's wrong with you? Oh, full of hypocrisy. 
then in a few days, you'd probably be deemed as a hypocrite. You know, you study, we should go after our people, brothers and sisters. And if you don't want to, then get out of the way. With the help of Allah, I go by myself. Either you're going to help me or get out of the mosque. I'm talking about everybody in here. Anyway. Sorry about that. Just have to talk straight to us as a family. Yeah, we're at war. But sometimes... When fighting is mentioned, <laughs> our eyes get as big as a silver dollar. And those who say they believe incline to the earth. Huh? Yeah. Go get our people, brothers and sisters. This man ain't got nothing. Because he's angry that Brother Farrakhan is attracting our brothers and sisters to the true faith of God that is Islam now brother Price and to the listening audience we want to do a recap last week we gave a lot of information is that right when you come to the mosque this is not a preaching session this is a teaching session so hopefully you came with your Bible or if you're listening via the television, please pull out your Bible, whatever version you got. There's so many, just pull it out. All right? We're not going to go by it. We're going to go in it. Our dear brother, and I have to let you know this. Let me, I, I want to do every meeting. The Bible, the question has become as we're embarking on our series, is the Bible God's Word? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Brother Farrakhan, he's teaching us that we believe in the truth of the Bible. But we believe and know that it has been tampered with. Christians may say, uh oh, not my Bible. See? An ignorant and blind follower would say, I don't care what y'all say. My Bible is right. You can take that position because you have been trained, as I said, to defend white supremacy. And you don't even know it. A white man after slavery gave you and told you it was from God. The same man that beat the hell out of you. The same man that raped you. That robbed us. Come on. How many of us did he murder in the name of Jesus? Jesus didn't do the murdering, but he did it in Jesus' name. Made up all kind of lies that you and I were the curse of Ham. We went for it for a minute until one of us studied and found out we were not of the Hermetic people. And the Jews are the one who gave the Christians that lie. Y'all all right? Now we got to talk straight because there got to be Muslim Christian dialogue. I'm challenging every Christian clergy in this town and the world, and I'm just a student, and I don't know as much as my father, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, but as a student, I believe, with the help of God, we can back you down from them damnable lies that the white man have taught you. But when you get scared in the name of Jesus, why do you run? Come out from behind 
a bushel basket. Come and challenge us today. I'm inviting, and this is on next week. Any Christian, I'm telling you, we will not harm you. If you don't want to come here, I'll come to you. Send me the invitation. Now, not to fight you physically, but let's deal with what is truth and what is lies. And if we in the nation are telling a lie, point it out. Prove it to me. But if I can prove to you that this Bible is a book that white folks took from the original writings and they changed stuff, took some things out and added things in. That's why they call all Bibles the revised this version, the revised that. Revised mean I have changed it. Y'all all right? Look. If you look in your Bible, in the preface or preface, I read this every week. In the revised standard version, this book is the product, it reads in its preface, of 32 scholars. Wait a minute, I thought it was the work of God. This is why the Holy Quran forbids us to take our doctors and our lawyers and our scholars as a God besides God. This is the product of 32 scholars assisted by an advisory committee representing 50 cooperating denominations. Then in the King James Version, the authorized King James Version, on page, well, in the preface, uh, on page three, you got the Roman letter I three times. Listen at what it says about the King James Version, Reverend Price and my Christian brothers and sisters. King James Version has with good reason been termed the noblest monument of English prose. Its revisers, go look up the word revise, in 1881 expressed admiration for its simplicity, its dignity, its power, its happy turns of expression, the music of its cadence, and the fallacies of its rhythm. It entered, as no other book has, into the making of the personal character and public institution of the English-speaking people. We owe to it an incalculable debt. Yet, the King James Version has grave defects. It's right in your Bible if you would read. And that these defects are so many and so serious as to call for revision. So in our series, brothers and sisters, we have proven. Now, they say that the book have defects in it, but where are they? Why didn't you tell me where they were? So that I won't be snared by that defect. Right? We have shown you, dear brothers and sisters, if you would read your Bible before every book, the book of Chronicles, the book of Samuel, the book of 2 Samuel, the book of 2 Chronicles, before every book, there is a synopsis of, first of all, who wrote the book, what was the circumstances at the time they was writing, and in many of the books of the Bible where it says author, there are many books where it says the author is unknown. But we thought it was God's words. There are some books in the Bible where it says, in the book of Psalms, the scholar said David wrote most of it. 
But there were some other people who wrote some of it too. But they won't tell you which part David wrote and what part the other people wrote. Because I don't want their part. Y'all all right? Got to lay the backdrop. So when you're going to come at us, dear brothers and sisters, Christian, first of all, you got to admit that these Caucasians in Europe tampered with the holy book called the Bible. Yes, they did. I don't care. I believe God was touching their hand. You can take that position. And hell will welcome you just like heaven will. You want to believe that it ain't been touched or tapped with so bad. See? Because deep in our soul, we are akin to God, and because we have suffered in America, we got to believe in something. But brothers and sisters, this is a world of information now. You can get on the information highway and run down these lies and find the truth. Come on, my dear. You got to learn how to peck on that computer. And you can go right into Europe into their libraries and you will cry after seeing what these Caucasian scholars did to the book of God. But if you run from truth, I don't want to hear it. I've been believing this all my life. I know. I've been there. But you've been believing and I have truth all your life. This is why one had to come and bring back to your memory, as Jesus said, it's expedient that I go away so that he, the spirit of truth, will come and he will lead you into all truth. So they say, which way, dear Jesus, which way, Lord, will he come from? He saw the son of man, he's coming. Where is he going to go when he comes? He's going to go wherever the eagle is. This country is going to have an eagle for a symbol. So he said, wherever the eagles are, there the caucuses shall be. As lightning shine from the east, even to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Somebody got to come after us. We need a Savior. Is that right? We need a Jesus type, or Jesus himself. But he, Jesus said, he go away, never to return, but one would come in his name. He will come testifying of me. Huh? He would reprove the earth of sin. Man, we need some opponents. Reverend Price, you for months was in your church shadow boxing. You go to a ring, maybe your first time in a gym where fighters go. And then you got some fighters who have mastered the art of shadow boxing. So they look good up there in the ring by themselves. <laughs> Making noise and you walk in there for the first time and you think he can fight because he's by himself. He look good, man, but then an opponent get in the ring. And we find out he couldn't take a hit. Huh? Like Bruce Lee say, good, you break board, but board don't hit back. Huh? We not set tripping, but we gotta set the record straight, sir. Yes, we do. We're not religious gang banging. We got the truth. Y'all all right? Well, what we're going to view today, last week, you know, we was dealing with the question, where did white people come from? Because I'm sure when they're among themselves, they ask, 
Where did black people come from? There's nothing wrong with that. That's a good question. In fact, it's a very intelligent question. Because if I know something about your beginning, that means if you go back 1,000 years, you have established a pattern. You have established a characteristic. See? If you go back thousands of years, I can look at you historically. Say, man, these people have always did this. This set of people have always done that. That set, ooh, look at that damn set of people. Well, the Bible says from one blood, came all things. From one people came all. Huh? Reverend Price and to the Christians, do you believe that the Adam of the Bible is the first man? Most Christians do. But when you look at the Bible and its uh, years on the earth, it can only take us back six thousand years. Huh? If you go among the indigenous people of the earth, we said it last week, you got to get part A. That there were many other ethnic groups who predicted the coming of a new people. Many. Shahnama, the Persians, in the book of Enoch. Remember, Brother Price and two of my Christian preachers, Tell the congregation the truth. That the 66 books that you find in your Bible are not all the books of God. These same scholars left some out. There were so many that they couldn't comprise it all in a book. The question becomes, why did they leave some books out and what was in those books that we can go and read about? Maybe it, was some of the, maybe it was something about them that they didn't want nobody else to know. See, Reverend Price, you really should have a problem with the Pope because his Bible has 73 books. Yours only have 66 books. Maybe you're under the 666. And in Christianity, there's at least 666 different denominations. Here's wisdom. For him or her that have an understanding, let him count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. Come on, man. And all of us that have the mark of the beast in our forehead, what is his mark? White supremacy. Revelation says when this white horse go out, it will have the whole world drinking from its fornication. Is that right? What people now got the whole world sucking from their culture? Japanese children spraying their hair blonde, putting in blue eyes, putting rings all in their nose, in their skin, following Adam's children. Your children now, spraying their hair blood. Drew Hill, gone. A black man with blonde hair, and everybody in the hood now got their hair blood. You hate yourself. Because you got the mark of the beast. You're trying to be like the beast. He didn't say the beast was a spirit. The book said... For him or her to have wisdom, let her count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And when the white horse went out, the rider was death. And everywhere this white thing went, hell followed it. Let's trace the course of history of Caucasian people. Because Reverend Price, you will see, he said, Elijah Muhammad is saying, all oh, white people are devil, ain't there some good ones? Hell, I don't know. I ain't never met one. I mean, in truth. In fact, I don't even know what would make him good. 
I know some white folks who do good. Y'all mad at me now. Messing up y'all white supremacist minds. That's what happened to those policemen who killed our sister, the homeless woman. Police are trained to protect white supremacy. What is white supremacy? Under white supremacy, three things happen to people of color. Number one, your life has no value. You are devalued under white supremacy. Meaning when you are murdered and when we kill, attention ain't even focused on us. Let one of them get killed. Look at now, they children shot somebody in a school. And we've been shooting every day. Ain't nobody tried to stop the gun manufacturers when we were shooting each other. See, they hate you. When Bloods and Crips were shooting, they made sure guns was running rapid. One of their children go off, now they're attacking the gun association. Damn. Poor killer red. Nobody care for the widow's son. Is that right? See, that's white supremacy. So a black life, a brown life, is devalued under white supremacy. We are dehumanized. Huh? And number three, we have been deemed a criminalized people. So every time the word crime is mentioned, it is synonymous to the black and the brown under white supremacy. Come on. And when we went and met with Chief Parks, with his weak self, you my brother, but you weak, man. All them Negroes was in there meeting with him. I'm sitting at the table listening. And he defending policeman murdering an old woman with a screwdriver. The question was asked to Brother Parks, did they have probable cause for stopping her? No. Was she breaking the law? No, she was just pushing a buggy. Listen to that white supremacy now, because you don't need the white man to carry out murder on you. Because there's some niggas who think white. <laughs> Telling you, man, we're not playing with you. Look, Brother Farquhar said, we're not going after skin color. We're going after our mindset. You can take all white people out of America. He'll still be here, because he in us. He's in us. We act like him now. All in Adam die. We have showed you where Adam in the Bible is a white race. They, that's the ruddy race people. You got to get last week's tape. I ain't got time to go through all of that. So they form their police policies to carry out white supremacy. What was she doing? Nothing. Poor sister. Damn, we can't dial 911 no more. Taisha Miller was murdered after her cousins dialed 911. Hell, that's the hotline to another gang. Reverend Price, why is the killing of Taisha Miller in the Bible? If you read the book of James, the fifth chapter and the sixth verse, let's read it. When our people are getting killed, he won't come out of his church. I'm talking about he a shepherd of Jesus. Jesus would have been in Riverside. That Negro one in Riverside. I wonder why.
You read, I'm trying to find it. Has anybody found it yet? In the book of James, chapter 5, verse 6, who said they found it? Read it to our find. Say that again. What version of Bible is that? No, it's, it's, it's important. That's new world. Is that world came in yet? She said, that's the new, no, no, I'm not, not a sister, but that is the new world translation. Thank you. Let me read mine. Here we go. These verses, I'd say they say so many different things. All right, found it. Mine says, Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he does not even resist you. That sister wasn't resisting him. That was a just call, the call of the police. She was unconscious. She didn't resist and got killed. Condemned her. But what was going on in their mind when they walked and saw a black girl? White supremacy. She has no value. She's got a gun, criminalized her because she had a gun. But yet, you says, every citizen have the right to bear arms. Not black folks. Come on, now, what was going on in them crackers' head? White supremacy. What was she doing? We saw a white boy had the LAPD riding for hours. He'd ride around in a damn circle, the car following. Boy, they ain't got that kind of patient with us. The damn man tried to run off the mountain. The barrier wouldn't let him. Stop. The cops got out and gave him a telephone. They said, here, call Tyrone. Why didn't you give Taisha a telephone? One white boy stopped on the highway. They sent a robot to tap on the window. Why didn't you do that for Taisha? White supremacy won't let me do it. When they go to the shooting range, they're shooting at a silhouette of a body, but the silhouette is black. And them cops, when they shooting, the conversation is going on in their head. Who are you shooting? I see myself shooting the black man and the brown man. Come on, man. When you get a gun, brother, even when you buy one, you don't say I'm going to kill a cracker. You say, let a nigga mess with me now. You don't get your gun to do nothing to white folk. They can walk in your house and slap hell at you and you won't pull your pistol. You know what you'll do? You'll pray for them. I'm going to pray for you because you know not what you do. I damn let a brother step on your toe. He dead. God, you pow, shot the man for stepping on one of your corn. You won't kill that white man, though. Because under white supremacy, he made you to believe that he got value. Come on, brother. So it don't take no rocket scientists to see that even in religion, they make us defend white folks. They paint pictures of the prophets of God and ain't none a brother. Not even a Korean was at the Last Supper. No Asians. None but white folks. So deep in our subconscious minds, 
We believe the white man is God, but he is the reverse. He is the devil. Yes, he is. He can come out of the devil mindset, but he got to accept Islam and bow down to the right law. For the book said, Adam, by one man, not, I'm telling you, by one man, sin entered into the world. Ain't that what it say? Who was this one man that sin came in the world through? Uh-uh, but Adam was the first man. He was not. I could prove that in three, three seconds. If Adam was the first man and Eve was the first woman in the Bible. And Adam and Eve had two sons. One was named Cain. I can't say that too hard to you. I say Cain to you. And you start feeling that drain again. Can't say Cain to the black. Cain? Yes, yeah, on the Cain. Cain? Cain? <laughs> Brother, get up and go use the bathroom. I got some cane too. He had a son named Cain and one named Abel, but Abel wasn't able to keep Cain off him. Right? That means at that time it should have only been four people on the planet. Well, when Cain killed Abel, then Cain left his father and went to the land of Nod and found a wife. Where did she come from? They could have not been the first man. It was all the folks here. That's why God said, come on, let us make man. See? Now, if you go into the book of Romans, book of what? Man, I'm feeling better. I want to read it to you. In the book of Romans, fifth chapter, verses 12 through 14, wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death ring from Adam, started from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned, after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. See, so people was talking about his coming. And we went through that last week. Shah number the Persians. Let me go and take you to some other scholars today. Of the making of Caucasian people. This is white folks talking about themselves. One such scholar and writer is Dr. C.W. Shields devoted many years of research to this field of study and concluded that the story of Adam and Eve narrates the birth of the first Caucasians. Throughout his writings, Shields also acknowledges that the human family did not start with Adam. In his book, his book is entitled, The Scientific Evidences of revealed religion. Mr. Dr. Shields wrote, the Genesis record deals with the Adamite Caucasian race. Although the human race is wider than the scope of the Caucasians and much earlier than the Adamites. Go read his book, Reverend Price. Other scholars have expressed similar points of view. There's another scholar called Dr. Poole. He wrote a book called The Genesis of the Earth and of Man. His name is Reginald Stuart Poole. He was a scholar coming out of the British Museum. In the British Museum, many of our books is hidden in the British Museum. He also surveyed the facts and found that both science and the Bible teach the existence of man before the making of Adam. 
In addition, Dr. Poole found that, that Adam was only the first individual of a new variety of species. I'm going to read that again. Dr. Poole found that Adam was only the first individual of a new variety of species. He says, white folk talking about white folk. Because I know y'all ain't going to believe nobody black. Go read his book. The man done the research regarding the racial significance of his finding. Poole admitted that Adam was the progenitor of the white race only. And that before the creation of Adam, the black race had been established in the continent of Africa. Another scholar, I got to give you more. Dr. J.P. Thompson, another scientist, also concluded that the Bible story of Adam and Eve outlines the early history of the Caucasian race. One of his books entitled Man in Genesis and Geology characterizes this view as one possible way in which the Bible and science may yet be harmonized. These are just a few of many scholars who have examined the facts. Their studies have led them to adopt position, positions which agree with the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. In their writings, they have concluded that the Bible story of Adam and Eve relates to the arrival of the world's first white people. They agree that dark-skinned people did not come from Adam, but instead were already in existence at the time when Adam was made. Roll the tape. Y'all all right? Go on. Price don't want to come in? And I, I'm trying to tell you if there's no hope for us in Christianity, there ain't no hope for us. Amen. And I want to carry the word us to include humanity. All the way to 1710. I got a problem with that. You told me this was a message for me. But I got a problem with this. Because I have researched both Christianity and Islam. And I, I'm trying to tell you if there's no hope for us in Christianity, there ain't no hope for us. Amen. Amen. And I want to carry the word to include humanity, not just black, but white, brown, red, and yellow. Amen. On page 221, this is my own mistakes under the reading. I quote, land of our own and qualifications, colon, the unity of 22 million, semicolon. There is no hope for us in Christianity. It's a religion organized by the enemies, the white race, of the black nation to enslave us to the white man's rule, or to the white race's rule. See, that's a lie. White man didn't start Christianity. Oh, he's perverted it. I'll give him credit for that. He's been a grand perverter of it. And again, don't take all, don't, don't anybody take this personally. I'm not talking about you. These are just historical facts which you may not even know about. Just because you had a white mother and father, you don't know your father could have killed somebody before you were born. You wouldn't necessarily know that, would you? What? No. You don't know everything about your parents. You don't know what they were doing before you came into the world. When you got there, they was mom and pop. But you don't know what they were doing before they became your mom and pop. Amen. See what I mean? Amen. So just because I say something, don't be looking strange like I'm trying to come against you. But it's perverted Christianity and made people think it was the white man's religion. It is not the white man's religion. Okay? 
So this is not true. And beside that, the white... He just say it's not true. What is your proof, Reverend Price? I'm going to ask you. And I've been asking this question to every Christian clergy. Did Jesus start a religion named Christianity? If so, what does he say it in the Bible? Where in the Bible do Jesus say, I leave you this day a religion, Christianity? We don't have a problem with Jesus now. We have a problem with somebody imposing a name of a religion on him. Now, I don't have a problem if you say, well, I accept his religion as Christianity, even though he didn't say it. I ain't got a problem with that. Because the word Christianity ain't an evil word. It's just not a religion that Jesus brought. Now, in Europe, these same 32 scholars, way back even with Paul, 44 years after the death of Jesus at Antioch, that's when the name Christ Dome, Christen, first started to be coming into fruition. But Jesus was gone 44 years. He knew nothing of it. In fact, Reverend Price and to the Christian family, open your Bible to the book of John in the 14th chapter, verse number 27. The closest thing to a religion or something that Jesus left, it reads in that verse, this day I leave, he said, peace, I leave with you. I mean, in that verse, that's what he said he leave. I leave with you this day my peace. Peace be with you. Remember, Reverend Price, and you admit it, Jesus didn't speak English. He spoke Arabic. He spoke ancient Egyptian Aramaic and Hebrew. So in, he would say, this day I leave with you shalom. This day I leave with you salam. This day I leave with you Islam. Is my way. But you said, you told us you had irrefutable proof, but you won't prove that one. Now run the tape back. He says, this is not true. He said, Elijah is lying, then present the truth. That he will not do, because he don't know the truth, because the truth ain't in him. That's fine, right there, right there. Y'all all right? I got a problem with that. You told me this was a message for me. But I got a problem with this. Because I have researched both Christianity and Islam. And I, I'm trying to tell you if there's no hope for us in Christianity, there ain't no hope for us. And I want to carry the word us to include humanity, Amen. not just black, but white, brown, red, and yellow. Amen. On page 221, Mr. Muhammad states under the heading, I quote, land of our own and qualifications, colon, the unity of 22 million, semicolon. There is no hope for us in Christianity. It's a religion organized by the enemies, the white race of the black nation to enslave us to the white man's rule or to the white race's rule. See, that's a lie. White man didn't start Christianity. Oh, he's perverted it. I'll give him credit for that. He's been a grand perverter of it. And again, don't, take all, don't, don't anybody take this personally. I'm not talking about you. These are just historical facts that you may not even know about. Just because you had a white mother and father, you don't know your father could have killed somebody before you were born. You wouldn't necessarily know that, would you? What? No. 
know. You don't know everything about your parents. You don't know what they were doing before you came into the world. When you got there, they was mom and pop. But you don't know what they were doing before they became your mom and pop. Amen. See what I mean? Amen. So just because I say something, don't be looking strange like I'm trying to come against you. But these are facts. White America has perverted Christianity Amen. and made people think it was the white man's religion. It's not the white man's religion. Amen. Okay? So this is not true. And beside that, the white race is not my problem. They're not my enemy. Amen. That, that's, the, you know, see, he says the enemies. The white race. White race is not your the white race is not the black man's enemy. Just because some white people in the white race have abused and misused black people, don't put every white person in that category. Now, he says some good ones. We're talking about Adam's children, brothers and sisters. All in Adam died. By one man, sin entered into the world. Huh? Talking about the one who was predicted to come. Them people brought sin into the world. Romans Chapter 3, verse 9, all the way through 20. You have to understand that in the Bible, in the early days, in that area of Rome, in the Roman Empire, there were many Jews. Jews who had accepted religion, Judaism, or Hebrews. But there were some white folks who didn't accept Judaism or the Hebrew religion. So they was called Gentiles. They were white folks in general. Because they had not yet accepted nothing. They were still following paganistic practices. Nimrod. And all these wicked holidays that the white man got you following. That's what they was doing. So all white folks who had not become Jews was called white folks in general. But look at what the Bible has said about Jew and Gentile. See, you think you're a Gentile. No, you are the original man and woman of the earth. You are not Jew or Gentile. But it reads, it reads, verse 9, Rome, Romans 3, verse 9. This is their attitude. What then? Are we better than they? Don't they think they're better than us? Under white supremacy, they have made white skin a badge of what? Honor. Black skin, I don't care how poor a white man is. He always, I don't care if the black man is rich, he still sin as a nigga. And he still think with no teeth in his mouth, still think he better because he too suffered under white supremacy because he had been made to believe the lie himself. You know how you can tell a lie for so long even you start believing your own lie? Oh, I'm the only one that did that? Okay. I just need some witnesses, you know. then? Are we better than they? No. In no wise. For we have before proved, both Jews and Gentiles, that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They don't like God. Don't tell me white folks like God. If they liked him, they wouldn't have kicked him out the public school system. They hate God. 
They won't even let the Ten Commandments can't even be inside of a federal. Get God out of here. They won't even let God enter into the White House. They'll let you come in and pray before they meet and then kick you out. Now get out of here. Come on, man. White folks, don't talk to them about God. You, oh, you done messed their day up. They want to talk about freaking. They want you to put some iron on your tongue. In your lip. Through your nose and around to your ear connected. They are all gone out of their way. <laughs> they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Their throat, listen at their throat. Their throat is an open supplica. With their tongues, they have used deceit. Have white folks lied? Have they used deceit? Yeah, they lying about Taisha. They lying about the elderly woman. They lying about so many that they kill. I mean, they can lie so easy. It don't even haunt them. Some black people will come back in because their conscience will bother them. These people ain't got no conscience. You mean ain't none of them? I ain't met one. Introduce me to one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of ass is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet, and this is true, their feet are swift to shed blood. They'll kill you in a heartbeat. They use lies to bring in policy. It's going to be a war on crime. No, man, that's open season on the black man. I got to kill. They got to kill something, man. They done damn near kill all hell if the white man didn't endanger some of the species. They would kill them all. They love to kill, brothers and sisters. They have to make up a law. This is why the Book of Romans say you got to put these people on the law. Because if you don't put them on the law, they'll murder everything in their past. They have to make a law. You can only hunt from a certain time to a certain time. They'll kill all the deer. Every one of them, man. You have to say, you can't hunt buffalo but for two weeks. Because if you let them hunt too much, they'll kill all the damn buffalo. You can only fish at a certain time. Why? Because they'll take all the fish. They don't want to eat it. They want to put a fish on a wall. Hell, if they could, nigga, they'll put you on the wall. Yes, they would. This white man loved to kill. If he could kill us and stuff us. They don't put us on the wall, but every one of our leaders they kill, they do name a damn street after them. That's a trophy. Don't tell me they ain't quick to shed blood. You're the only niggas that go for this nonviolent stuff. You're the only one that love your enemy. He proven to you. You voted for that freak Clinton. He don't love his enemy. He's bombing Kosovo right now. But he went to Columbine High School, a damn hypocrite, telling the children, don't resort to violence in means of settling your differences. You damn hypocrite. That's what you resorted in, in Kosovo. You bombing them people for ethnic cleansing. Who gonna bomb you for ethnic cleansing our minds? Come on now, Price. Listen. Huh. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their way. Look at their history. Everywhere they've gone. Go to Africa and look at what happened to the people. Go to Central and South America. Look at the original inhabitants when they met white folks. In return, look at what they got. Go to the Isles of the Pacific. Go to Hawaii. The true Hawaiians don't even own the island. That is the white man's playground. He laying bass in the sun. 
everywhere he's gone, destruction and misery have been in his way. Not you. You ain't did that. You just in misery, but you ain't spreaded it nowhere. And the way of peace have they not known. Since white folks been in power, when have they ever been in total peace with the world? There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law said, it said to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. You have to put the white man on the law or he will go crazy. Look at the original man before we met white folks. We was living in harmony with the planet. We didn't have no books about no law. We didn't need it. Our nature was peaceful. Prior to the coming of Adam, there wasn't even no sin. See? Everything we did, even when we rebelled, we rebelled in truth. We weren't deceitful about it. We said, look, I can't get everybody to speak the same language. I'm going to blow it up. All right? One of our scientists, he didn't lie. He just blew it up, drilled a hole in the ground and blew the moon out there. He didn't lie. Told the truth. Roll the tape. Roll the tape. See, you get, you get upset, you get upset if the white folks categorize you as a black person and make it look like every black person is a mugger and a raper and a doper. You get upset about that, but then you don't mind making every white person the bad guy. And that's not true. So let's, let's be fair about it. Black man, white man, did you know what I just quoted from Mr. Muhammad? I doubt it. On page 228, Mr. Muhammad states, under the heading, quote, land of our own qualifications, semicolon, or colon rather, we must have some earth and soon, semicolon. Believe it or not, we have been serving and worshiping the real devils. Stop preaching that old lie that God loves all human beings. He most certainly does not love the devils, the white race. End of quote. Now you, you say I'm attacking you? I'm not attacking you. You're the one that wrote this. Your leader wrote this. I'm just giving you this information. You might not have even read it. You might not even know about it. Listen to this. Quote, page 228, message to the black man in America by Elijah Muhammad, copyright 1960, what did I say, five or three? said it so many times I should remember it by now. 1965. On page 228, Mr. Muhammad states, under the heading, I quote, land of our own qualifications, colon, we must have some earth and soon, semicolon. Believe it or not, we have been serving and worshiping the real devils. Stop preaching that old lie that God loves all human beings. Right there, that, that disqualifies the whole thing. That, that one statement, forget it. It's, it's over. Amen. That disqualifies the whole thing. You God hate? I mean, no, no, no. Maybe some Christians don't believe it. God loves everybody then I got a problem with God. 
If God loves American white folks for what they did to our people, I want that God. In fact, me and him going to have some knocks going on. But I'm not worried because I know God ain't that way. Now, he said right there, disqualify all of that. Because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, stop teaching that damnable lie that God loves all human beings. Now, if I could show you just one human being that God hated in the Bible, would that disprove him? Let's go see. Book of Romans, book of what? Ninth chapter, verse 13 of the New Testament. You go to the Old Testament, Malachi. Chapter 1, verse 3 in Malachi. Let's go to Malachi first. Y'all all right? That'll be all right. Yeah, we got to go to the oldest known source. You know, Reverend Price, he's a firm believer in going into the, going to the oldest known sources first. Okay, okay, here we go, here we go. Now, we're in the book of Malachi. First chapter... Verse 3 in Malachi. It's talking about the Lord's, the Lord, say the Lord, love for Jacob. But in verse 3 it says, and I hated Esau. And laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. I mean, here's God saying, I hated Esau. He didn't just say he hated, he named who he hated. Now, Esau was one of the sons of Rebekah. You know, Rebekah had these two twins in her womb. Esau came out first. Jacob grabbed the hold of his heel, because they were fighting in her womb. You go to the book of Romans, Chapter 9, Reverend Price, and Christians who think like you. Verse 13, it reads, As it is written, conferring to Malachi, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Stop teaching that damnable lie that God loves all human beings. I love Jacob, but I hated Esau. Oh, God. That's God talking. If you don't like that part of the Bible, certainly you can tear it out, throw it away. Now, you mean to tell me the way God wiped out Pharaoh, that was love? Now, Pharaoh had the children of Israel in bondage in Egypt. Did God spare them? So he killed them in love. I love you so much, Pharaoh, I'm going to kill you. David wasn't no love. If you go back and they say David was a prototype of Jesus, David used to pray to God, kill his enemy. He said, kill them all, make them my footstool. I wouldn't mind my enemy being my footstool. Prop my feet up on one of them. Oh, uh, you don't like that. You mean God loved Sodom and Gomorrah? And all them homosexuals? He killed them all. Oh, he said, Ooh, I love y'all faggots so much, I'm going to kill y'all. He wanted to spare him. A lot thought he could find a good one. Hold on, God. Hold on, God. God, I tell you, God is first. They find a hundred. Now find fifty. 
I mean, God, his mercy. He reached, I tell you what, find one, I'll spare the whole city. Man, Lot went. He took a long time. Then these three deaf angels came, walking in the city, looking for Lot. Faggot saw them angels, too. Find black angels. Looking at all these freaks. Huh? I believe them. Look. <laughs> yeah, them angels need to walk down little Santa Monica. If the angels walk down little Santa Monica, they'll say, damn. I think we better get at these. They worse than they was in school. <laughs> but the angels walked, man. And they went in the lost house. Lot with disappointment. Because he couldn't find one. But there was a knock at the door. Because them faggots saw where them angels went. Lie, lie, lie. I know you in there. Oh, y'all be quiet. He doing that too good. Yeah, let me stop. <laughs> Lot got happy because he thought these men was coming for his daughters. Lot on the door. Oh, my daughters. Are daughters? Uh -uh. Where the men just go? <laughs> I tell you what, like here, you got this amount of time to get out of here. We out of here, cuz. Did God love Sodom and Gomorrah? Come on, Reverend Price. Your price ain't right, man. Even where Sodom and Gomorrah was right today, not even a blade of grass grow where Sodom and Gomorrah used to be. But I know God killed them faggots and love. I love y'all so much. I'm going to kill you, boy. I wish we would kill like love, like the blood. You my blood, but I'm, I love you, man. I love you, man. Pow, I love you, boy. Nah, man. Run the tape. I just wanted to find one. There's many in the Bible, brothers and sisters, but God has both sides. Ecclesiastic said, Jehovah be the same God. No way. No way. Listen to this. Stop preaching that old lie that God loves all human beings he most certainly does not and this these two words does not are underlined in the book does not love the devils and in brackets the white race end of quote black man white man did you know this i doubt it now let's go to the bible and see a particular scripture that would just blow a gaping hole in that statement. My, my, now again, my concern is we're talking about that which we're committing our lives to. Amen. You know, we're talking about making a life commitment here. I mean, this is like a marriage. Until death do us part. Amen. Only with this it goes beyond death. I, I just quoted it for you. He said, stop preaching that old lie that God loves everybody. He most certainly does not love the devils, the white race. That's a quote from Mr. Muhammad. 
Now, in the Gospel of John, in the Bible, inspired to be written by Jehovah, who is supposed to be Allah in disguise, says this, John chapter 3, verse 16, for God so loved the world. Now, you are ignorant. If you don't see that, there's a problem here. Something wrong with your head. Let me go back and quote it again. Again, my purpose is, he told me this was a message to me. I'm a black man. I'm in America. Run it back to that Bible. says this, John chapter 3, verse 16, for God... Now, everywhere you go in the world, when you're looking at TV at a baseball game, you always have this. I'm telling you right now, this right here is a lie in and of itself. Okay, don't get emotional. Because I got to prove it. He don't do much proving, but I will. Then we'll let it run. But let's look at it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Question is, and if Jesus is the only begotten son, then there should be no other sons of God in the Bible at all. That's one of the things we got to prove. But even in this verse, he really don't say what he's saying. Got a comma. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, comma, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I mean, everybody else going to perish. So he's saying that he loved the world and everybody in it. He's only going to love those who's following his son. And we have to keep, I keep having to teach this man English lessons. And he called himself Dr. Price. This is not saying God loved the whole world. He said he only loved those who believe in the world Jesus talk about. A world of peace. But, but, but now, 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 now look. If God so loved the world and he just loved everybody with no condition, oh, we all in trouble. How does I work to be righteous and do right? And somebody will never try to do right? I'm going to see that fool in heaven? Oh, I'm leaving. I'm like, oh, man. I'm out of here. <laughs> I could have kept selling my dope and been loved by God. Really? I could have kept killing and been loved by God. I could have remained a freak and been loved by God. If God so loved the world, big old lie, he gave his only begotten son. Come on, Christians, we're going to show you. Jesus was not the only son. Now, if God so loved the world, then why wouldn't Jesus pray for the world? Jesus should never go contradictory to God. If God so loved the world, Jesus wouldn't even pray for the world. Go to the book of John, book of what? Chapter 17, verses 8 through 11. In verse 8, it reads, For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. They have received them, and I have known surely that I came out from thee. And they have believed that thou didst send me. 
I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Why did you take that down? Put it back up. He called us ignorant. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Just only a specific group. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me that they may be one as we are. Now, if God so loved the world, why wouldn't Jesus pray for it? That's one verse. Now, first of all, let's show you where Jesus was not the only begotten son. I hope y'all got enough paper. So many verses. Are y'all ready? This is a book called Muslim Christian or Christian Muslim Dialogue. You should get this book real, real handy in various verses. Let's read through them. Book of Exodus. Book of what? Chapter 4, verse 22. When you see the word sons of God, you shouldn't take the word son literally. Because anybody that is beloved of God becomes his child. See? That's why the old folks will tell you. When you meet old folks, they say, son, come here, boy. They don't know you from Adam, but they'll call you son. Exodus is read. And thou, Moses, shalt say unto Pharaoh, thus said the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Now here's Israel. Israel in this, God has said Israel is my firstborn. Now if you read, now read 2 Samuel, 2 what? Chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. And 1 Chronicles chapter 22 Verse 10, it reads, He, Solomon, shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever, and I will be his father, and he shall be my son. With the defects in it, so many, and so serious, can't come at us with no Bible flawed book that white men untouched. I know that hurts you that you not know that white folks touch your Bible. You go to the book of Romans, 8th chapter, 29th verse. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn of many brethren. There go another firstborn. Now, if all are firstborn, what is Jesus? If everybody is the firstborn, what is Jesus? Here come the Christians. See, you ain't got it yet. See, because Jesus was the only begotten. Gotcha. See, all that first boy and stuff, I ain't with that. I ain't with that. Because my Bible tell me that Jesus was the only begotten, you Muslim. Let's see. Long before Jesus was born, way back when, God said to David in the book of Psalms, chapter 2, verse 7, I will declare the decree 
the Lord has said unto me daily, Thou art my son, this day I begot, have begotten thee. So David is also a begotten son of God. Who is begotten? Is it David or is it Jesus? Reverend Price, you told us go to the oldest known source. Psalms came before the book of John. So based on your rules, Reverend Price, David is the only begotten son. Based on your rules, Old Testament came before New Testament. If you go to the book of Matthew, fifth chapter, verse 45 and 48, it reads, that ye may be the children of your father, that ye may be the children of your father, and be ye therefore perfect, even as your father which is in heaven is perfect. Man, now everybody is his child. You go to the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 18. And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. Now, in view of these passages in the Bible, there is no reason whatsoever why Jesus should be regarded as the Son of God in, in a literal or unique sense. But the Christians say, no, nah, no, nah, y'all, uh, uh, uh. see, okay, don't worry about the guy. Okay, don't worry about the guy. But what makes Jesus unique is he didn't have no father. Now, oh, so that makes him the son of God. He had no father. Come on, come on. Ain't that what they say? See, don't worry about the big guy. Don't worry about the guy. Can you prove that to me? I, I ain't seen that before. But what makes Jesus unique is he ain't got no father. <laughs> well, if that's the case, by not having a father, then Adam should be a bad cat. What is Adam according to God? Because Adam had not a father or mother. God took some dirt. Read the book of Luke, chapter 3, verse 38. Seth, S-E-T-H, Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. Now, 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 okay, okay, okay. He ain't the only begotten. He ain't the only one that didn't have a father. Adam didn't have a father or oh, mother, but check this next cat out. You go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, verse 3. Check this one out. He was without father, he was without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth as a priest continually. I mean, here's a man that had a mother or father, had no beginning of days, no ancestry life, no nothing. Who is he? You go to 71 and read Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the most high God, who met Abraham. He is more unique than Jesus and Adam. Why is he not preferred to be the son of God? 
Here, hold on, hold on. Let me read this again. That is one of the biggest lies white folks have ever put paraded in front of the world. It's in your Bible. David was a begotten son of God, too. Seth, Israel, Ephraim, Melchizedek was so cold-blooded, he didn't have no mother, no father, no beginning of days, no descent. Adam had no mother, no father, man. He came up out of dirt. Oh, and then you, that's the real OG. Huh? Come on, Reverend Price. He's in trouble, brothers and sisters. God so loved the world. What world? See? God loved the world that Jesus was talking about. He said, this day, I leave you peace as the way. But Jesus said, I have to go away so that a comforter can come. When will he come? At the end of time, Reverend Price. What area? He's going to go to America. She ain't here yet. So I give her a symbol that I know she's going to take up. Her symbol will be an eagle. So wherever the eagles are there, the pocket shall be. Talking about us, brothers and sisters. You can't put that small time stuff over on us and try to throw that in our face. Then your Bible condemns you in saying that God, Jesus, was the only begotten. No, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But, but, See, you, 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 you. See, in the Islamic world, we only say, what we say about Jesus is that he was the son of Mary. That way, can't nobody deny that. You can't deny Mary. Everybody else probably can get denied, but not Mary. Now look. Jesus was known in some Christian uh, circles to be the son of man. He refused to be called the son of God himself. Go to the book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 41. And devils came out of many, crying out and saying, Thou art Christ, the son of God. And he rebuking them, suffered them not to speak. For they knew not that he was Christ. They ain't too convincing, I mean. Now, if you go to the book of Luke again, ninth chapter, verse 20 and 21. Listen at what Jesus said. He, Jesus, said unto them, the disciples, but whom say ye that I am? Peter answered and said, The Christ of God. And he straightly charged them and commanded them, Tell no man that thing. To tell no man that thing. This is Jesus talking. Jesus, brothers and sisters, was a prophet. You read in the book of John, John 3 and 2, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. They just say, you're just a teacher. John 6 and 14. Then those men when they had seen the miracles that Jesus did, said, this is of a truth. That prophet that should come into the world, Jesus is also called a prophet. If you go to the book of John 7 and 40, you can go to Matthews 21 and 11. 
Jesus wouldn't let nobody say he was the son of God. He said, don't you tell nobody that thing. See, Jesus, brothers and sisters, was not the only begotten son of God, but Jesus was exactly declared to be the son of God based on his spirit and his obedience. In fact, as Muslims, we have to believe in and follow the path of Jesus. But we cannot say and make Jesus God's equal. We can never do that, and that is a big mistake that the Christians make. They make Jesus something that he don't make himself. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for listening, and may God bless you as I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. Brothers and sisters, certainly, uh, sorry, I, I went over, I went over time. I should have been more mindful. Y'all all right? Please don't leave. I want to ask you a couple of questions. How many of you are here with us for your very first time? Raise your beautiful hand. 